can't be serious. I mean, really though? You mean to tell me that them Voltrons went out like that? Hey, yo, Nims, let me hold this for a minute. Bong, bing, close the train doors. The pool swept, can't believe they got 04. Kyrie, you a problem child. Well, whole set, shit, let me move my bowels. Bong, bing, this must be a dream. I thought I saw Spike with the other team. Bong, bing, what we talking about? No matter who's on your team, you in the Knicks house. That playing game don't mean you won inside the playoffs. Don't even talk to the media, take that jersey off. The four games I'm tuned in, you had the city watching. Don't even watch Philly play, just watch James Harden. That swing pick, never mind, I let my man take him. And now KD having nightmares of Jason Tatum. That famous line by Lord of Lux says you gon' get this work. Don't talk to me about Ben, he said his back hurt. Like Kyrie likes the Nash, you can take the blame. Come next year, I'm going back to playing half them games. The truth be told, we don't care about your bar clays. When it comes to the city, this year is RJ's. My young gems right now, yeah, they on some shit. From OB topping, I man your ass real quick. A line flip, no, I feel bad for Blake Griff. That's the loss you gotta take to win a championship. Now you back like the New Jersey Nets. What you thought your final four was cutting down the nets? Bong thing, close the train doors. The boom swept, can't believe they got 04. Kyrie, you a problem child. What well, whole set, shit, let me move my bowels. Bong thing. This must be a dream. I thought I saw Spike with the other team. Bong bing. What we talking about? No matter who's on your team, you in the Knicks house. When it comes to the city, it's all. Salute, salute, salute. The streets are buzzing. What's good, Knicks Nation? Hope everybody is good out here excited, ready for a fresh season of optimism and New York City basketball, New York Knicks, let's go. We're in training camp. We've been hearing a lot of talk and uh, talk is cheap. You know, the New York Knicks are going to let their play do the talking from next week. That's right. We're so close to actual games and ready to watch and chop this thing up. Well, salute to Nick Nation out here. Salute to the chat. Salute, replay gang. Let's get into it. I'm ready. Lots of lots of news to chop up. And uh, what's been everyone's impressions of this thing so far? It's some very, very interesting sound bites we've been hearing. But, yeah, like we see and we see every year, you know, talk is cheap. The New York Knicks play will do the talking this season as well. I'm ready, ready for actual games and uh, and ready to see – what this team can do this season. RJ Barrett talked about shocking the world as well. I love that mindset, you know, love that mindset from RJ Barrett. And uh, that's what it's all about, you know, coming in here, confidence, believing in yourself, believing in this squad and just playing hard, you know, let the chips fall where they may, but just play hard, you know, leave it all out there. Salute Pudge, nice, what's good? Yes, we back at it. Let's nick it. Appreciate you as always up in here, ready to to uh, get into it. That's a tap. Let's go, New York. Stand up. That's right. Bong Bing. There's going to be plenty of that this season. Absolutely, yo. What's good, fam? Appreciate you coming through. Tie on. Appreciate what's good. Let's get into it. Yeah, plenty of our uh, talk. Obviously, the uh, the the main talking point so far has been the uh the talk about tom thibodeau you know we know the questions he would have been asked about you know that was the uh the hot topic that everyone wanted to uh you know to hear about is the rotation and what was tom thibodeau's thinking and a uh, cash out salute what's good yeah let me uh pull this up there you see the Knicks roster 19 man roster in camp right now these gentlemen are going to go to war um, in camp, ready for the first preseason game against Detroit. There you see uh, 19 men. Um, the 20th slot is left open at the moment. You know, Ian Begley reports that the New York Knicks will uh, will be trying to to get a secure a buyout for Jean Montero as well. You know, there was reports that he would be a, a target for the Knicks to bring into camp as well. So we, you know, we we wait and see. What's going to play out with that? Yeah, but with this situation, with these guys here, 
it's all ahead of them this season. It's absolutely all ahead of them as well. Tom Thibodeau talks about a clean slate. You know, everyone starts from from even keel day one. This roster, how how is he feeling about it? M. Rivera, salute. And, yeah, my thoughts are my early season prediction has been 45 wins. Well, I think this, this roster we see here isn't going to be the one that finishes the season um, to me. And I think the New York Knicks are going to get hot towards the end of this season. And there's also going to be some movement, some trades, and a, a roster shakeup of sorts, um, which I think will lead to the Knicks' 45 wins. You know, certainly could could achieve better than that. Um, but I'm keeping it at 45 wins, and I'm confident of that. The, the point guard play, Jalen Brunson, it starts with him. To me, the key additions, I feel good about the additions we've made with Jalen Brunson, Isaiah Hartenstein, and a lot of improvement from within with this roster. RJ Barrett returning for his fourth year, right? He's going to be super motivated and ready to get into it. Um, he's six foot seven now as well. He's ready to guard those wings each and every night, ready to take on that challenge and be a two-way demon here. And that's exactly what the New York Knicks need, right? If, and we're going to talk about the starting unit, and if the talk of Evan Fournier starting at the two guard is true, then RJ Barrett's going to be absolutely pivotal in terms of defending the best wings each and every night. M. Rivera, salute, salute. Nick's talk for breakfast. Yeah, appreciate you. Hope everyone's starting their day on the right foot, ready to get into it, get your bread. And uh, much success lies ahead. And uh, this is going to be fun this season. I'm really, really excited for this season. Well, it's not just about wins and losses for me this season. First and foremost, the most important thing to me is the process of this season. You know, improvement from within. You know, we went through what we went through in the off season. You know, we didn't pull off the trade for Donovan Mitchell. And that's just a, a reflection of how, you know, the challenges, you know, you can face when, you know, external uh, factors are at play. And the New York Knicks need to focus on internal improvement. Development from these young players as well is critical to the growth of this team. Well, we made really nice complementary improvements. Like I said, Jalen Brunson, 26 years of age, a nice uh, piece to build with. And Isaiah Hartenstein, I think, is going to surprise a lot of people this season. But the returning players are the keys for this season. There you see everyone ahead of you. We'll go through them all. Quentin Grimes, you know, whether he starts or he doesn't, opening night, he's going to have a huge role to play. And my opinion is he'll definitely be starting at the two guard at some point this season. If it's not opening night, Quentin Grimes will start the season. Will, sorry, will find him, his way into the starting unit at some point this season. Well, I'm not so much... Um, yes, I would much prefer him to start opening night. And I feel the frustrations of, of many, many Nick fans if, you know, they... You know, if the the talk of Evan Fournier starting is true. Uh, with that said, though, I'm not as focused on, you know, the start of the season. It's more how we finish this season and the process along the way. Um, I do know that the Knicks obviously uh, want to clear, you know, their aim is to clear up some of this logjam that is this roster. And, and, and they know that the task is ahead of them, you know, and they're going to endeavor to you know, to open up some spots throughout the season. But truth is, opening night, this is the roster. And, and you've got to play these guys. You know, you've got, to, you've got to play with who's at your disposal. For this thing, still Dre, salute, Nick's gang, strong out here. Luke, good morning, fam, from Cali. Appreciate you, man. It's super early out in Cali. What is it, about uh, almost 5 a.m. out there in Cali? Salute, salute. Appreciate you as well. Uh, what have been your thoughts so far in training camp? Like I said at the top of the show, talk is cheap. The Knicks players will let their play do the talking from, from next week on. And we're less than a week away from, from real games, preseason action against Detroit. It's going to be key, you know, to, to establish chemistry, getting off on the right foot. These guys are, you know, learning each other as well. Um, you know, talk about the Knicks big three, all the three lefties, Brunson, RJ, Julius, 
you already know our heroes ready to uh, establish that chemistry in preseason and uh, and overachieve you know we heard from bobby marks online the videos out there on espn and twitter and youtube well bobby marks is uh is quite bullish on this roster and and thinks that we can achieve what i said 45 wins well um he thinks this roster is solid depth is key um it's about chemistry and how how they fit together as well good morning man child up in up in the house hope you're well and yeah it's about cohesion and chemistry with this thing and of course tom thibodeau you know utilizing the right rotations you know, pressing the right buttons to get the most out of this roster uh, in terms of uh, wins and losses on that side of things but for me wins and losses aren't the most important thing with this it's the growth the internal growth and development of the Knicks young players and um, also you know utilizing and putting in the veterans in the right positions to boost their their stock as well you know when moves need to be made um, that'll help that along the way definitely um you know i talked about my one safe bet and one bold prediction you know my safe bet is that the new york knicks defense will be above league average now yeah for that to happen quentin grimes has got to get a lot of minutes because like i said there's going to be a lot of pressure on rj barrett if evan fournier is starting at the two now tom thibodeau talked about the, the shooting side of things which i'll bring up now with ian begley's quote there you see ian begley's quote and evan fournier fitting into that starting two guard spot is all about the shooting and i get that you know evan fournier is certainly the best shooter as proven last year when he broke the franchise shooting record from three-point line and i salute to him you know evan fournier is a baller He's no joke uh, on the offensive end, um, but it's all about fit, you know, and Tom Thibodeau even mentioned that, you know, how do the pieces fit together? He said, this ain't fantasy ball, this ain't 2K, you know, I get that side of things of what Tom Thibodeau is trying to portray in, in terms of the Knicks badly need the shooting. Well, but if the Knicks get out slow, best believe, and if, and if our defense isn't where it needs to be, then I, I can best believe that there'll be a switch up, you know, there has to be right king puppy in the house let many blessings good morning as well beautiful day ahead for you and everyone out here it's nick's nation salute as well man child hits it was no surprise to me that tibbs was going to start for an ea <laughs> you know i could say the same thing as well fam but um my hope you know i was really really you know the talk was around that quentin grimes would really get a chance and you know tibbs could still pull those surprises but if fournier does start it's not going to be a huge surprise let's be let's be honest right it was uh, a lot of fans worst fear in terms of that tom thibodeau's reliance on the on the veteran you know side of things and like i said he uses the rationale of the shooting evan fournier shooting to help him get that fit into the starting unit like i said i'm okay with you know whatever we start the season with i'm not judging it by the start it's it's how willing are you to make switch ups if things aren't working you know he rode kemba walker he rode uh, elford payton too long he rode alec burks too long before he made an adjustment you know and it's about trying something out and if it ain't the worst if it ain't the best thing and it's not working then switch it up man absolutely switch it up yep on point man child with that still dre says hopefully evan can start hot to help the knicks break out 20 plus points then the knicks finished the game with grimes instead well yeah i like what you're saying still dre and one would think that yeah if evan does you know start games it doesn't mean at all by any stretch that he's going to be the one finishing out the games uh, like you hit on as well you know could be a small ball two guard lineup with d rose uh with quickly and brunson you know tibbs loves his closers and evan fournier did ride the pine uh towards you know, a, a lot of the the big portion of last season right 
And uh, in terms of Grimes winning Tibbs' trust, I'm not worried about that at all. Right? Uh, Tibbs does love defenders as much as he does love shooters. And what do we know Quentin Grimes does? He gives us both. Well, right. Whilst Evan Fournier is the more established shooter at this point in time, it's not going to be long before Quentin Grimes shows that he's more a complete player up in here. Luke, RJ seemed the most appreciative of Brunson. Good observation, Luke. Both players have the skills and, more importantly, the motor to win. Go Knicks. Yeah. Yep. Facts, Luke. I, I completely agree. You hit the you hit the money. Um, in terms of mentality, those two real recognize real with with RJ and, and JB. Facts. Um, talk about the will to want to win and get it getting it in New York. Those two understand what it's like to, to really win in this market. And um, and I and I think yeah, uh, RJ just wants to win and he, he welcomes in talent. You know, it was him and Julius that had to, you know, carry a large bulk through last couple of years. You know, now we bring in that point guard as well. RJ can can get easier looks, and he also doesn't have to force the issue on offense as well. So, yeah, welcome addition as well. And I love the quote again, what RJ said. We're going to shock the world with that kind of thing, right? I know talk, it's just talk. RJ will back that up. You know, he will back up back up his talk with actions. With this thing, yeah. Dirty Dancer, salute, salute. Tibbs practically has to say the incumbent vet is the favorite. Yep. Yeah, no lies. Absolutely. We know the salaries there and, and, and such. But yeah, in terms of starting the season, it ain't how we're gonna finish games out and how we ain't gonna finish the season as well. Um Best believe the Knicks will be looking for for trades, you know, not just Evan. There'll be trades in general, deals being explored and uh, and trying to get things to fit. Um, I've been, you know, on record to say I like the role of Fournier off the bench. Absolutely. His shooting is needed for this team as well. And I think it would it would fit well with the bench unit, you know, and those guys getting up and down, you know, you know, faster pace. Evan trailing on the break, he's going to get that three ball off, right? I like that off the bench for Fournier. Um, but, yeah, best believe, I think Quentin Grimes has still got that chance to win that starting spot. It just may not be opening night. It might be 10 games into the season. It can be 15 games into the season. Let's see. For the love of the game, fam in the house, salute. Check, out, check them out, doing work. Hard will, L. Appreciate you guys, and uh, it's going to be an amazing season. Uh, many blessings. We're going to have fun with it as well. We'll be chopping this up constantly, and uh, let's get into it. I know you guys will be out there trying to make it to some games. Yep, it's going to be amazing with this thing. New York City, we ride or die with this team no matter what. Eddie F, appreciate the honored company we are in on this chat. Salute, Eddie. Appreciate you. Well, I know you're hyped for this season ahead, right? Like any other Knicks season, it's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, but there's going to be bars, there's going to be madness, there's going to be, we're going to be shutting streets down with this thing. And this is what it's all about, right? Getting to the games with this thing. I hope Fournier eats steaks all season <laughs> so the games can start, yeah. Almost forgot about that for a second, fam, as well, with the Fournier thing. But, um, yeah, man, his tib's going to be under pressure. If some of these quotes are like what it's all about, then, you know, what people are reading into, then he's definitely going to be under pressure on the hot seat. You know, these veterans disappoint tibs. He's going to have to quickly pivot, I feel like.
appreciate you guys holding me down. Just switched over the internet as well. Yeah, let's get back into it. Appreciate everyone rocking with this thing. Salute. Let's shout everyone out who's come through. Yeah, Eddie, we're still going. D, salute. What's good? Hope you're well, fam. Give us your uh, win projections, D. Not sure if if I've heard your uh, your win projections yet. But um, yeah, I've I've given my forty five as well, and I talked about I talked about the reasons of the forty five, and that being that uh, I think the way we uh, finish the season is going to be hot, and I think yeah, there's going to be some roster moves. With that said. Dirty Dancer giving us 40. Salute, Parish, Duggar in the house. What's good? Sam, hope you're well. And uh, Parish says, salute. I like where our team is with no superstars. You have to be 12 deep to win against second units. Don't worry about who starts, Knicks fans. Guys will earn who ends the games. Yep. Yep, nice one. I like that, fam. I like that. Definitely, man. Players are going to earn their keep with this thing. Um, yeah, whoever starts the season is is, is whoever t Tibbs gives the nod to. But, yeah, best believe if results aren't going the way the team needs, then there will be there'll be adjustments. You know, um, you know the, the, the biggest culprit was the Alec Burks thing, the Kemba thing, you know, the point guard situation. Fans had every right to be, you know, you know, upset with that situation, but the point guard spots now resolved as well. And I do think that it's it, it's up. It's basically the wing spots, the wing spots, and how much is he going to play Julius is a big question. Julius and Obi is the other huge elephant in this room, right? Yep, salute, peace, Boulevard, 73, what's good? Peace. Bren, what's good, fam? Yep, let's get it. Absolutely, man, hyped up for this season. Pudge Nice, giving us 40, 48 wins, top eight. Let's get it. 48 wins, top eight. I like it. Dirty Dancer giving us 40 well 40 yep that, that that that's that's play in territory i think d 40 45 let's go bren got 45 as well yep nice yep so uh d's given us 37 okay 37, 38. Yeah, look, it's, it's a tough schedule, man. Absolutely tough schedule out here. Not going to lie with this situation. Tough schedule. Um, look at the division. Look at the East. I certainly uh, can completely understand anything 37 related. The team's made improvements, but the East has made improvements as well, right? King Puppy, the team knows what our coach wants. Yep. And they sound hungry, excited, and determined. This could be a scary team. Just saying, look out. Yeah, look. The media that do see potential in this team. And I think if we can play 500 ball, like we saw two years ago, we play that 500 ball, we work through it, and uh, we make some changes, you know, some key roster changes throughout the season. Then who really knows how the season can finish up? Um, what's going to be key is getting, obviously, getting off to a good start with this thing. Forty-four seven seed. Well, I like it. Like Eddie got forty-one plus one play-in win. Yep, forty-one, and we make the play-in win. Nice. Yep, Pudge got JB and D Rose ending games as well, fam. That's what I was thinking myself. And I could see quickly closing some games. I could see a, a small uh, three-guard lineman with RJ next to those two. I like it, man. You need a bucket. You can stretch the floor out more as well, play quick as well. With one big man, um, 
it's going to be interesting to see how Mitchell Robinson comes in this season and in his free throw shooting, which is going to keep him on the floor. You know, if Mitch is, you know, a demon on the glass, like he usually is blocking shots. And also if he's hitting free throws, then Mitch will stay on the floor. Well, yep. And the most important thing for Manchild is the youth development this season. Yep, I completely agree. You know, wins and losses, and it's good to talk about it, you know, and and grow as a team because that would mean success, you know, in terms of some players improving. But the youth development and getting an opportunity to play meaningful minutes is what this season's all about. We know we're not winning a championship and it's about making or setting the table, you know, setting things up for the New York Knicks to to grow and continue to improve, you know, as an organization, right? We can't take steps back. We cannot take any steps back with this thing. Um, the assets in tow that Leon Rose talked about that we're flush with, all of that, right? It's gonna be interesting to see all season long, you know, what they do with that, you know, and how loud the talk gets. Well, yep, Derek Rose coming in at rookie weight, Bren, got some quiet confidence on the low. Man looks energized, less lethargic and tired. Get me on that diet. <laughs> yeah, salute to Derek Rose, man. His, his dedication to this game at his age through the injuries and the like, what he's faced, just ultimate respect. For D Rose, ultimate respect to him, man. Um, I do hope that though we keep him healthy, we play him the right amount of minutes. Nothing, no need to to be playing him any more than twenty eight minutes, you know, at max. I think if he's closing games out, Allah wise peace salute. What's good? One of the things I like about this year, every player came into camp looking different and ready to go. Well, right, yep, absolutely. Yep, if they're looking to win, it could be tough for some of the kids to get consistent minutes. It's got to be a development with this situation and pivoting with that. Leon Rose talked about there's no edict, right? So, you know, all reports look like Tibbs is still running the show in terms of, you know, rotations and, you know, and, and closing lineups, starting lineups and things like that. But you've got to think, you know, for the business side of things and this roster to take shape and, and what the front office is trying to accomplish. At some point this season, if things aren't going the way they want, you know, they have to be quicker to pivot towards bigger minutes with this thing, right? Yep, spot on, King Puppy, chemistry, absolutely key with this thing. Maverick Mac. In the house, I see us getting 45 to 47 wins if things go the right way. Yep. Lots has to go right, but I think it can. Yep. Yep. And every season got a mind of its own, fam. Absolutely. Um, it, it would be tough to see plus 45 wins, but with that said, I think it's got a lot to do with the roster change. Well, well I'm not saying this current roster would get 45 wins. But with a roster change at the deadline, I think, you know, things things will close out well this season. I think the Knicks will close hot. Yep. Pudge Nice got Tibbs will start off slow this season. But it's going to be interesting to see, man. He he really can't afford to, to start out slow, I feel. Yep, absolutely. Um but I tell you what, D as well in chat, you know, it seems like there could be a heck of a lot of drama this season. Heading into this season, we see the Drake Jay Crowder talk. Uh, DeAndre Ayton doesn't look happy to be in Phoenix. There's going to be a lot of storylines out here with this thing. LRY has got 50 burger. <laughs> Peace. Salute. Parish in the house. Salute. That's good. Not the 50 burger this early. Manchild's are more of a wait and see guy. Yep. Very wise with that. Um, very rational with this situation. And yet with the Evan thing, like I said, I'm, I, I prefer Grimes to start, but I'm not jumping off no cliff at the moment because I know changes will come 
you know, if, if things aren't working out. Um, but best believe I want Grimes to get meaningful minutes, you know, and I'm confident he will. But the biggest worry for me is the Obi Randall situation. I don't think Tobbs is, Tibbs is going to want to play those two together enough for Obi to get bigger minutes early on, you know, with Hartenstein in here. We'll talk about him more because I got huge uh, upside for Hartenstein in his impact this season. But yeah, with him and Mitch, the two big men and Jericho, there's just a lot of big men now. So, and, and, and we know Tibbs isn't really into playing. You know those two together. Pudge Nice got Brunson, Rose, RJ, Jules, and Mitch closing out games. Yeah, nice, nice closing unit with that thing, man. JB can can close games out. Best believe it. He can isolate, devastate, penetrate with all of that. Yep. Yeah. RJ going to absolutely explode this season. Yes, yes. Facts. We need that. A bully season from RJ. Yep, he's ready for this thing, man. He hears the noise. Absolutely. King Puppy says to me, is it just sound like the players finally sound like dang, we finally have a point guard? Yes. We have finally have that quarterback. Right. The biggest thing is just the uncertainty's taken away. Fam, like we know who's starting every single night at point. You know, we don't have to like sit in anguish. Is it gonna be Burks? Is it gonna be Peyton? Is it going to be someone else? Man, we finally know who it is now. You know, it, it also makes that Derek Rose's health and importance ain't as critical with this thing, right? And Mitch, at, yeah, 65% at the line would be satisfactory. That would be an improvement. I'm hoping he could get to 70, man. But that, that will be wishful thinking, I think. You know, slow, slow steps, I guess, for Mitch. Um, he had shown a little bit of improvement with hitting some free throws, but yeah, I'd like to see a bigger jump. With that Nick's 26 champs. What's good. Tibbs will be a lame duck coach this year. I wouldn't be surprised if he, I would be surprised if he makes it beyond all-star break, man. Certainly, uh, you know, it has the potential to explode. I'll say that definitely has the potential to explode. Pudge says Tibbs already on the BS. I'm going to call him out right now. Right, facts. You're calling him out right now, live on YouTube, on the show. And uh, what's got you most annoyed? Is it the Fournier situation with that? I'm also equally annoyed he's, he wouldn't play Randall and Obi together. Well, Manchol says, I hope Mitch stick to what he said about taking jump hooks yep, and mid-range with that situation, right? And we have a super chat, ladies and gentlemen, from Parish Duggar. Appreciate you as always. And rocking out. CT salute. We're all set to have a great year. Facts, right? You said it. Let's get it. With this situation, New York Knicks. We rock out and ride and die with this team no matter what. Right, the best fan base in the world with this thing, MSG, is going to be pumping this year. And uh, we're going to see better basketball than, than the, what we've seen last season. Right? I'm confident of that. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. But with this roster and its depth, we're definitely going to be in a lot more games, less blowouts, better finishes, hotter starts to games. Remember how slow we started so many times, you know, down double digits, you know, coming out in the third quarter, half asleep, all of that. I don't think that's really going to happen. Well, if we lose games, it'll be, you know, lack of talent, just closing games out, lack of talent maybe versus these elite teams. But we're going to be, I expect us to be in most games every single night with this thing. I gamer salute what's good. Knicks is going to surprise the league. A lot of the great team in the East do have a lot of injuries as well. Yep. Yep. Like I said, man, every year definitely has a mind of its own, fam, and, and just, yeah, different things happening that we can't anticipate. But we can always expect that that's going to go a certain way. But then, you know what, something shocks us, this thing. Yeah, I like that too. 
that's 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 uh perfect 20 minutes for rose too yep nice one yep and you know there's talk about quickly getting a bigger role from you know from um begley and you know that would that would facilitate that you know you would have to decrease derrick rose's role for quickly's role to improve i think that's the way i see it with those two being heavily connected and you know what with back to backs and closing games out keeping rose fresh for the fourth quarter that would be perfect right keep him at you know keep him at like 12 12 minutes 13 14 minutes throughout the game and when it's go time and you need rose then he's fresh fam yep and eddie says a handful of wins can be decided on whether we can run an inbound play or a clean final possession and that's why i'm cautious on the win total completely agree yeah great point eddie well that doesn't get spoken of enough i think that that you just hit out hit on with that you know and and, and the final x's and o's you know final plays of the game inbounding getting a clean shot and not just a heave or a contested fade away things like that and what's going to help that fam is a point guard 48 minutes of point guard play as well and i you know, i do hope quickly still gets a chance to run some point as well i don't wish injury on no one but we talk about this depth ladies and gentlemen chat kings and queens out here ready to rock i think the depth could be the story this season right um injuries do happen covid health safety protocols happen as well um the depth is going to help this team you know, I will say that, right? If guys are sitting on the pine, they're going to stay, have to stay ready because they, they never know. You know, when their number's called, they may not get another opportunity again and uh, they're going to have to be ready to take it with that situation, right? There's a lot of situationals too, right? A lot of people want to see Cam, see Ferron Hunt get a show, get Deuce McBride, you know, get some opportunities as well. Heaps of situationals. Boulevard 73. I need to see 10 games to make a decision on Tibbs, right? Yep. Nice one, man. We'll, we'll be chopping it up after 10 games and we'll revisit revisit your thoughts on and, and also yeah, what the situation is happening. Well, but at least you're saying you're you're going to give it a shot and you're going to see what it looks like. And then we make that decision with that thing as well. Um, with that situation, we're in camp. You know, everyone's expecting Evan Fournier to get that start now, but we don't know how long that's going to last. And we don't even know if it's actually going to happen on opening night. You know, strange, strange things have happened. Pudge says, he said nobody studies the team more than him. <laughs> that don't mean nothing <laughs> with that situation. He absolutely did say that. I think yeah, Tibbs eats, sleeps and breathes this thing as well. But yeah, I hear your point um, with that thing. He does sound like it's my way or the highway. I think I think fans are sick of hearing that that situation. Um, the thing is, I want to see Tibbs admit when he's wrong, too. You know, when he makes mistakes and he's you know and he needs to switch things up. I want to hear him say, "Look, you know, that just didn't work. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this now." It will take time for Brunson, but I think he will make a better and I think he will make the better and mesh good with these players. I saw someone post prior, and I agree. It's who will end up closing, right? Yeah, definitely, Pam. But starting the game is critical as well. Closing is, is is more critical, definitely. But starting the game is critical too. We can't get in get ourselves into a hole. Them. you know we know the drill we know how many games we all started out slow with that situation right down double digits and that thing right still say seven seed nice nice yep eddie says on the first possession some rj needs to rip someone's face off and swallow it while dunking with the right hand and then make the free throw then we could all shut up yeah, nice. Yep, I got you, Pudge. Nice salute. 
Dirty Dancer says Tibbs needs to stop playing guys more than 32 minutes in the regular season. We have too much depth. Right. Yep. That would be a perfect scenario for me. Absolutely. Keep everybody's minutes down with that situation. And I, Gamer, if you look at the team, Knicks is very deep, especially on the second unit. The East have a lot of teams that have issues already and aren't as deep as the Knicks. Yep. Yep. That could be the key thing, man, that everybody's overlooking the Knicks depth. Everybody want to look at starting units and talent, things like that. But with this thing, it's a long season. We know the grind with that thing, fam. Salute, sharp powers in the house. Let's get it. Appreciate you as well. Shah, are you heading to any games, any opening night game at the Garden? Any, you know, let us know if you're hitting up any game. There'd be fire out there. Team is stacked with that situation, right? We know the roster like I had up. Bring it up again with this thing these 19 men ready to go into battle with this thing wayne says i expect injuries and dnps to occur so your favorite player will like get minutes at some point yeah like i said your yeah, 82 game season you hit wayne um it's more, I guess, you know, fans understand what the what what they want the future roster to look like, and they want to fast track some of these movements. You know, Evan Fournier, Julius Randle, the names as well. What did the Knicks do with Cam Reddish as well in his future plans as well? Um, fans want to see this team from the get go, this team for the future. I think from the get go, uh, you know, we won thirty seven games last season. Evan Fournier was the starting two guard. I think most fans want to see something different with that thing and see what we got in Grimes. And that's fair. You, you could be you could be respectful of Fournier and what he brings, but also still want to see Grimes. You know, that's the boat I'm in. I want to see, you know, I'm okay with Fournier staying the whole season if he's off the bench, giving us that shooting stroke for 25 minutes. Quentin Grimes' defense, I think, next to RJ, because I feel like they're both two way players on the ascend. And that's what helps, what, to my knowledge, is what I feel helps win NBA games more than just the shooting up in the, that thing, right? We, we didn't have a whole heap of talent two years ago, Alfred Payton, Reggie Bullock, but we were, we were holding teams below 90 points to win games. You know, and then we bring on our closers that finish the deal. Yet yeah, with that thing. So yeah, we talked about how critical RJ Barrett is, right? At the three, he's six foot seven now. Um, not that I doubted that, but yeah, he definitely standing next to Julius. Uh, you guys all saw the same thing on on a content day about RJ's size now, and uh, he, yeah, he's he's a bully now, and uh, six foot seven ready to guard the wings with this situation. Uh, long term, we most fans prefer RJ at the two, but right now he's our three. With that situation, he needs to guard threes next to Fournier and Grimes and whoever starts. But yeah, uh, RJ, fact, RJ Barrett is my X factor for this season. Right, He definitely can be the team's most improved player, and uh, but he is this team's X factor, as in they go as far as RJ Barrett with this situation. I don't think we're going to see a worldly different Julius Randle. I don't think we're going to see anything different to what Jalen Brunson has shown, but we could see a very different RJ Barrett. I think he is the player with that potential to come in here and show us something very different with this thing, such as a player in his fourth season with this thing. So that is for me, the, the X factor for this season is RJ Barrett. Wayne says, my biggest concern is how Tibbs does use the bench. Well, I don't envy Tibbs's job this season whatsoever as well. Um, and you usually say that about any coach, you know, that has a deep roster as well and, and not a clear rotation, a clear nine, ten man rotation uh, with this thing. Um, these situationals are going to have to get comfortable with practice, you know, and trying to earn minutes with this thing. Uh, 
they better hope the Knicks are blowing teams out, you know, so they can get consistent minutes. Pudge says the same. Yep, defense first. Yep, absolutely. That's the way it is for me. Defense first, offense second with this thing. You know, we don't have a whole heap of, you know, worldly talent on this roster, right? We need to play to its strengths, and that is to to utilize two defensive wings, I feel. You already got a six foot one point guard with Jalen Brunson. Yeah, so having Grimes and RJ next to next to him, I think is nice. Um, I'm not worried about the shooting because we got dudes that can still fill it up, right? We got Brunson, we got RJ, and we got Randall that are all strong going to the cup as well. And then Quentin Grimes can stretch the floor as well. So let's see how that plays out. Yeah, Evan Fournier is still going to get a ton of minutes, no doubt about it. He's still going to be getting plenty of minutes. He's Evan Fournier. He's not going nowhere till December or the trade deadline. And his shooting is going to be key for this team. But that shooting can be key off the bench, you know, 24, 23 minutes off the bench yeah, and, and rocking out with, with, that, with that lineup, you know, going fast, up and down, playing with pace with this thing, right? Parish hits that RJ making his teammates better is the X factor. He and Randall have too many unreasonable turnovers due to a lack of awareness of their teammates. Nice point there, Parish, too, in terms of the rest of RJ's game and in his evolution as well. He has playmaking ability. Yeah, he's going to be handling the ball some as well. Um, what can he learn from Brunson, you know, and, and, and developing that skill set? Definitely playing off those two better as well. You know, there's a lot of talk about those three being lefties. You know, they're going to have to figure it out, uh, figure it out for better or for worse. They're the Knicks big three right now. And uh, and playing unselfish is key. Absolutely. Right. Canal, salute. Up in the house, salute. Let's get it. Hope everyone's starting their day off well and getting into it, getting their bread, and many blessings ahead for this situation, this season. And uh, it's going to be fun chopping it up with you all. David says Quentin is not there yet with his field goal percentage. Not quite yet. That is one thing, definitely, I don't dispute with the Fournier situation. He's done it longer. He's proven it. He's a veteran. And he broke the franchise shooting record. So... Lots of respect to uh, to Evan Fournier from last season, um, you know, and we've certainly the Knicks have seen worse defensive players. You know, Evan Fournier is not a good defender whatsoever, but we've seen much worse in terms of defenders out there. I just don't. I'm not encouraged by the pairing with Brunson, him and Brunson together. I'm I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that situation, but I love Evan shooting definitely that situation now let's get to eddie f super chat got everyone buzzing eddie says ct last year mitch dominated maybe eight to ten games versus lesser teams but it gave others a break what's this year's over under on mitch's on games that mitch dominates well great great question eddie f i always appreciate some mitch talk as well some mitch love well, because, you know, I mentioned RJ, everybody, Mitchell Robinson's improvement and seeing a different kind of Mitch this season is going to be huge from where this team can go. And we talked about the point guard with Jalen Brunson. I think Mitch is going to have a, his best offensive season so far. Now, in terms of domination, it's, it's two-way. It's double-doubles. And uh, I think Mitch is going to have a huge season um so in terms of the over under on on games mitch dominates i'm gonna put it at i'm gonna put it at nine yeah yeah i think i'll put it at about nine or ten nine or ten fam in terms of games that he dominates but with health with good health that could certainly be up in the 15 range as well give us your thoughts on that everyone as well on that situation with mitch luke says last season the third quarter seemed to be 
the point of contention. Tibbs, he has to figure it out. And when he does, the dubs will add up quickly. Right. Absolutely on point, Luke. Couldn't have said it better with myself. There was a lot of issues with the third quarter, right? Lethargic play. Um, players not coming out ready as well. Very, very slow. You know, there were games, like Luke says, we're up by two, four points. And then four minutes into the third, we're down by eight. And it's like, whoa, what happened, man? I just went to get some popcorn and, and a drink. And, uh, and the Knicks are down um, with that situation. I do feel like it had a lot to do with, uh, you know, with dudes overplaying minutes as well. I do think Tibbs did tire players out. You know, Alec Burks, we saw how many minutes he was playing with that. And that's probably the best thing about this point guard rotation, you know. If it's 38 minutes, 36 minutes Brunson, and uh, he gets a nice break, a nice spell with D. Rose and quickly, you know, backing him up. Definitely. Yep. Wayne hits on two. I like the point Wayne makes about the first two preseason games will reveal a lot too. Definitely in terms of rotation, um, how players, you know, look with their new wrinkles to their game, um, players looking bigger and stronger out there. Absolutely spot on with that. And, of course, we played Detroit. Then we played back-to-back -back with Indiana. And then we finished with uh, Washington as well. Um, as well. Definitely teams that the Knicks should be favorites in as well. So that's also a, an interesting point that I'm – really look looking forward to seeing fam how we play being the the favorite versus the underdog with that situation we know that the the wash the um orlando magic gave the knicks fits you know early on with that situation you know in the season the knicks losing games that they shouldn't have lost with that right the whole team has a clean slate They've got to show up and show fight, right? Facts, absolutely. You know, as a baller getting paid and hoping to get opportunity, it doesn't get any better than opening night, you know, starting the season with camp as well and earning your spot with this situation, um, with this play. And, of course, it's not just rotation spots, it's minutes. Well, you know, players producing, produce on the court, don't just hit shots, um, uh, shoot shots, make shots. You know, and then the coach will play you more with that situation, right? Uh, we know how much Tibbs loves D. Um, he loves two-way players as well. So look for the players that are producing the most on both sides of the floor to get minutes, hopefully. Otherwise, there'll be real issues, right? Bren says, Randall got to simplify the game, get off ball completely and take open jumpers. He is more dangerous facilitating out the post and stretching out that thing yep just less touches in general like I, I i really feel like a lot of randall's folly was over exertion um he really was the dude to carry us you know two years ago and then he tried to replicate that but it backfired badly um you know there can be nights brand chat that randall can be the third option fourth option even and, and that should be embraced, I feel like. That should be embraced. He shouldn't feel the pressure to come out and get 25 and 10, you know, every single night, you know. There could be nights where Randall has 14, 10 rebounds and 7 assists. And I'll be like, man, that's, that's almost triple-double like, you know, a triple-double watch with that fam as well. And with that, let me throw that question... Let me throw a question to Luke, the chat, everyone out here on the streets are buzzing. Knicks Nation, put the over under for Julius Randle triple double. Triple double watch Julius Randle this season. That's what I'm looking for as well. I put an over under triple double watch for Julius Randle. At, I'm going to put it at two. I think Julius Randle's got a couple triple doubles in him this season, being able to facilitate now with more shot makers. Yep. Yep. 
I'm not surprised. Our Dirty Dancer mentions yeah, Begley bringing up the Rick Brunson thing. Um, that was also brought up by Fred Katz um, yesterday as well. Uh, Fred Katz uh, tweeted out also The Athletic reported from John Krasowski, I think, who covers Minnesota, where, where some things happen as well. So, yeah, there's definitely going to be you know a lot going on around the league at the moment. Can the Knicks stay out of the back pages as well, off the court? It's going to be interesting. The Randall thing, it was a distraction. You know, it was a distraction last season, not just his play on the court, but the talk, the news, all of that swirling around uh, with that situation. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, apparently, riders are allowed in the locker rooms now before games, after games. So that's going to be very, very interesting to, to see. Um, you know, of course, we got news, you know, Mark Berman hanging it up, you know, salute Mark for for his contributions to covering the Knicks for 23 seasons as well. Uh, everyone's time does come to an end. I wish Mark well in, in retirement and whatever he, he goes on to as well. Mark has been on the show many times. We continue to talk about things and, and, and things like that. Um, yeah, with the way the thing's going, you know, it was the right time Mark felt to, you know, to step away yeah, you know, to follow other things, you know, enjoy enjoy his life, and uh, yeah, and, and move on to different things. You know, wish him well, and and certainly, you know, for most of my Knicks life and fandom, there's been Mark Berman, you know, writing articles as well. So it's yeah, you know, it's it's the end of an era essentially with that situation, you know, and and Knicks coverage, NBA coverage. It's going to be interesting to see how the Knicks, other beat writers, and the other Knicks coverage. You know, it turns out, you know, this season. Now we've got a super chat salute, Parish Duggar in the house on fire. Appreciate you again, Parish, as well, and your generous contribution. Parish says, I hate the diss Mitch Robinson has received by our fans concerning him actually being the first re signed Knicks draft pick. Which round don't matter. Well, yeah, I hear you with that, fam. Yeah, there was the talk, obviously, about the first draft pick uh, sign, signing an extension in terms of the Charlie Ward curse and whether it was a first rounder or a second rounder, okay? Yeah, appreciate you getting that out there with that situation. The point lost is that he was a player that we drafted that was re-signed as well, and that's very significant. Don't matter what round it was, well... I got to be honest. I was prob I was very surprised um, at the number. You know, I I had a feeling they would re-sign Mitch. Still, you know, that it got closer and there was talk about it happening. But fifteen mil, the Knicks really put their money where their mouth is with Mitch. I don't think they were really bidding against anybody significantly with that kind of money. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Mitch comes in in in, in this year, man. And in, in terms of his playing style, his playing weight, and all of that. A la Wise, Tibbs and our point guard's usage of our bigs should be something we look to exploit and make sure Mitch and Hart and Sims get touches. All right, yep. On the same point of, same theme with that situation, right? Yep, share the rock. Get these big men down low and get them opportunities, right, to punish small lineups. I allow wise appreciate it. Yeah, certainly um a lot of a lot of teams go small, right? And we have a, we have a certain strength with our roster with with big men. Definitely different kinds of big men. Big men that can get out, leak out quick, big men that can shoot now and big men that can rebound and play above the rim. With that, it's going to be key to see how our guards use them and don't get tunnel vision, you know, um, pick and roll action, all of that. Wayne says I'd sign Shvi Mackay look as insurance because he's a decent three point shooter in the case that Fournier and Grimes do get injured. Yep. Yeah, it was a very, very smart signing, Wayne. I mean, I'm, you know, he's no world beater, but it was savvy, I would say. The Shvi Mackay look thing, you know, he's 25 years old. He ain't old. Um, he's a veteran in the league. 
He's got a certain above average skill set, which is shooting. And he can also defend a little, you know, he's six, seven and a half and, and, and tough. Well, he's not a, a lockdown defender, but he can defend the wing spot, right? He's, he's strong enough to defend wings as well. It's a nice backup, uh, you know, backup spot for a non-guaranteed uh, veterans minimum contract. Absolutely. I think he's going to stick around and also a little underrated fact with that contract is it's very trade friendly when you're when you're trying to put together a blockbuster deal mid-season you know a, a contract like Svi Makai look that's partially guaranteed you know can be can be waived by another team you know it could be used to make salary work and then it can be waived as well so very very savvy signing so that cash out says if Obi and Grimes don't get at least 20 a game Yep, have absolutely every right to be furious. Yep, especially Grimes. Obi might hit the 16, 18, 20 range, but Grimes got to hit 25 minutes for me. Cash out. Randall, the only one who needs a clean slate, like the rest of them, says Dirty. For that situation, yep. We all know the situation with Julius, and it's above the head. You know, Julius is coming in shape. He looks rested. He looks ready. Um, how long is he in Nick? Nobody knows. But, yeah, we want to see – yeah, I want to see him play to his strengths and in the right spot to not dribbling the heck out of the ball in that situation, right? Yeah, maybe Cam too. Yep. Look, yeah, we'll, we'll hit on that situation with Cam. Cam Reddish. Um my advice, if I'm Cam Reddish, I just don't panic. I, I chill. My time comes, you know, whether it's in a, with a trade coming, whether there's an injury, just fall out and practice. Show the best version of yourself, Cam, and uh, the rest will take care of itself, I feel like. Um, Tibbs loves workers, and he loves guys that can shoot as well. So that'll be key. You know, holding his own defensively and hitting the shot will be big for Cam. To, to bust into that rotation with that situation, you know, you know, we don't know. Grimes could hit a sophomore slump at some of the, some point you've just got to stay ready so that you don't have to get ready. And uh, D says also, we will have problems against some athletic fast bouncy teams. Didn't do too much to address that in the off season yet. Definitely size at the wing, like we've talked about, D and chat yeah is this is a big weakness of this team you know we're relying on rj six seven not a traditional three and you know quentin grimes six foot five as well and that's where cam reddish can make his mark you know with this team you know evan fournier we know can't can't keep up with with athletic players up in this thing um you know, I've been talking about I wouldn't mind seeing Obi at the three a little just to see what it's like, um, just because he's like someone we don't have. You know, it's a different look. Allah says, Randall averaged five assists. If we made shots last year, he could have averaged seven for the season, right? Yep. You just got to be keep you know, being a willing passer with this thing, Allah, and also, yeah, not forcing shots as well yet yeah, being a willing passer and, and moving the rock with that situation because yeah like i said randall doesn't have to carry the knicks on offense whatsoever he just needs to to be mindful of when it's right to move the rock and when when to force a shot or not with that because he de we definitely have offensive help with this thing fit says grimes starting jerry salute i never thought grimes has moved ahead of both fournier and iq if Grimes was to start, IQ would be out of the rotation, and that was never a possibility because D Rose is backing up the point guard spot. Yep, look, it, it comes down to Fournier. Yep, it's always going to be that battle, I think, with Fournier and Grimes. Yep, with that situation. But yet, yeah, Tibbs has made it clear he's at least explained, you know, the reasoning, uh, ladies and gents, with that situation. And I'll bring that up again with that quote from Ian Begley that um, 
that Tibbs made with that situation, and it's about the shooting. You know, Evan Fournier's shooting is what's going to get him into this starting unit. You know, if he does start, Evan Fournier's ability to hit that shot consistently, you know, we saw it many times last season, opening night as well in the double overtime classic. Evan Fournier shot the lights out with that situation. Um, we know his shortcomings on the defensive side of the ball with that situation. Um, but yet, yeah, like I said at the start of the show, and I keep saying, this roster ain't going to be the one to finish the, the season. So I'm not overreacting to st- opening night starting lineups. So I know there's going to be changes along the way um, with this thing. Um, I just want to see Tibbs more willing to switch things up if and when things aren't working, I want to see him make adjustments as well. He rode Alec Burks way too long. Um, that was because obviously we didn't have the point guard. Now we do. Um, the Kemba Walker thing as well. Um, was yeah, We were very slow out of the gate. With that dirty dancer, it would be nice if one of our 300 milli guys made an all-star game. Right. Absolutely. That would be a feather in this season's cap, fam. And we could talk about the awards of this season. You know, is any player up for it going to be up for any award or all NBA selection or defensive team, et cetera, with that situation, right? To me, Jalen Brunson has the best chance to be that all star. And then RJ and Julius, you know, after that. But I'm just more happy with team ball. Well, I don't need no player to ball out in terms of particular stats this season how those three play with each other is going to be key to the Knicks looking good functioning and picking up dubs with this thing Luke's at three triple dubs for Julius I also see a few games with 15 boards yep I'm liking that bam yep nice one I put it at two you've gone one bigger than that for three that situation E Gibson salute how we doing? How we feeling? Give us your win projections this season. I want to see everyone in the chat, everyone out here as well. Well, we shout you out. We just want to see, I want to see what your win projections are as well. Not that it's all about wins, but we're about to you know, kick off another season with the Knicks. And it, it's, it's going to be a, a fun season, but it's going to be a situation where there's going to be uh, it's going to set the table for this franchise moving forward. He's hoping Cam gets that opportunity to crack Tibbs rotation so we can see what he brings to the table for us. Yeah. I, something tells me Cam will get his chance. Um, it just may not be to start the season, but if and when he's called, he's got to be ready. Absolutely, he's got to be ready, ready to, to ball out. And I'm looking forward to seeing camp footage as well, hearing from some more players as well, you know, and hearing from the news about which player is looking good with this situation. Cash out says Grimes is better for the three point than the 38%. His percentage has dropped when he did come back from the injury. Yeah. And then he didn't have the rhythm. Yeah. That that's a key point cash out makes as well. And I think he was just young into his career, you know, rookie season. Uh, he certainly factored in a lot of game down the stretch, fam. That big uh, bust-out performance against Milwaukee was huge when he hit seven threes with that thing. right? But I think Summer League got to give Quentin Grimes, you know, a world of confidence and, of course, being kept out of the trade talks with that situation. Got to have him really really hyped with this thing fam so with this situation bully barrett's quotes fam we could shock the world yep we could shock the world in the words of rj barrett right what did you guys think about that did you like that quote hearing hearing that come out of rj's mouth i love it me personally well, I love that confidence in him, and, you know, and th- these guys believing in each other. So you have to go into the season. Some people might say, oh, it's crazy, 
you know, it's delusional or something like that. But you've got to go into the season believing in yourself, right? If you don't have that belief, it's going to fall. You're going to fall down real quick, you know, in this thing. So I love that from Bully Barrett with that situation, right? So Jerry says, don't get me wrong. I think Grimes has huge upside. Stroke looks pure, good D, smart. He just has to wait his turn, keep improving. The only He only scored 15 or more three times in 46 games, and others have done more than that situation. So Jerry's high on Grimes, but just wants to see him wait it out and keep improving and earning the keep with that situation. Yeah, certainly not. I'm not forcing Grimes into no star role yet either. You know, I, I'm aware it's only his sophomore season. You know, and there's going to be plenty of opportunity for Q dot with this situation, right? Um, we, we all know players that have had a heap of expectation on them, you know, and what's happened after that. But yeah, the truth is, I love the fact. The biggest thing I love about Grimes is his two-way potential. Well, if his shot's not falling, what are you doing on the other side? In the words of Tom Thibodeau, to stay on the floor with that situation, right? Stopping the other team from scoring and making it difficult as well. Yep. Cash out says exactly seven threes on his first NBA start against the defending champs at the time. Yep. Grimes is ready for cash out with that situation. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a huge season for Grimes and he's going to get plenty of opportunity. Yep. As will Fournier. Um, it's Cam that is a little bit harder to predict if and when he'll get his chance, I think, with this situation. But best believe one injury can change this whole thing. One injury can change it drastically with that situation. That's pretty good for a rookie. Yep, definitely. Danny, salute. I think Cam needs to play. He's very talented. Yep. Yeah. And talk, talking about a roster with issues with talent, athletic talent in this modern NBA, Cam Reddish has that as well. Um, you know, I, I hope that the Knicks don't feel rushed into moving him. You know, you know. So, so we gave up a first round pick. I know it was protected, but use this year to to, to see. You know what Cam can do for the New York Knicks. I think. Um, at least wait till the trade deadline and then and then make that call, I think. Then make the call. And I salute Tay. Yep, I did absolutely see Alan Hahn as well, talking to CP about it with Cam and, you know, murmurs about the organisation questioning Cam's drive. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure, you know, I don't want to misconstrue quotes either, but I'm not sure. Sh- sure how much they're questioning his drive it may be such about the other players like quickly ob grimes and those guys just to be more of more involved in terms of being gym junkies as well i think cam's confident in his ability but he just may not be as much of a gym rat as much as those other guys are you know and and, and those guys having that bond you know being drafted by the knicks being together more up in this thing. So, yeah, it's fascinating. But, yeah, D says, yeah, Boulevard to to Boulevard. Cam is going to have to, going to have to pit ball mentality this year, right? He's going to have to have that. It's a contract year. It's absolutely huge for his his career. We saw what happened with Kevin Knox. You know, he had to sign, you know, a veteran's minimum, to stay in the league now. You know, Cam Reddish with a great season can earn himself a nice contract with that situation. So, you know, I could definitely see him wanting a new change of scenery, such as Mark Berman mentioned by the trade deadline. Let's be real. In a contract year, if Cam Reddish is out of the rotation, he's definitely going to want another opportunity, I think, with this situation, right? Yep, 
Also, yeah, that's the spot. Issue is the RJ going to play 34 to 36 this year and not a lot of time for Cam with that situation yet. Ideally, the best fit is RJ at the two. Yeah, let's be real. Um, if RJ starts shooting like 38, 40% from three, that opens the door for him to push back to the two. And then, yeah, we, we see what we can do with the three spot. But, yeah, I'm just not sold on RJ, RJ being the long-term three. Jerry says, this is why I know Knicks will win 50 games. Our 11 to 15 may turn out to be Grimes, McBride, Sims, Ryan, Svee, and that's some real talent. Top 10, we'll have to perform. Yep. Facts. Right, yep. Certainly, man, anything's possible, right? I could believe people when they say 37 wins, and I could believe on, on the higher 40s, you know, 50, if everything goes right with this thing. Truth is, we haven't seen a squad with a point guard like this for how long? And we don't know what kind of impact that's going to have on everyone else, you know, on the big men, on RJ, on, on Julius and all of that as well. I think chemistry is going to be good for the team, depth. Other little things like if Derek Rose is healthy, Mitch is bowling out and growing as a player as well. And, uh, and pressure in camp and practice is going to be key for this team, right? Cash out, don't care what Fournier getting paid. If you watch football, look at the Giants. Well, yep. I hear you. <clears throat> we see who gives you the best chance to win, right? In Tom Thibodeau's eyes, he might think Fournier is the guy to help the Knicks with the shooting. Well, um, <clears throat> like we mentioned, man, with, with Mitch starting at the five, right? And Julius not being the best three-point shooter, that is a, a big issue in terms of spacing, right? Um, but, yeah, I do want to see Fournier off the bench for me, but I can understand his shooting. His shooting with the starting unit from Tom, Tom Thibodeau's perspective is what he wants, he feels is going to help the, the rest of the unit what, what, in terms of what's going to fit. Now, my thing is the defense regressing – should be enough to see whether or not we can survive, you know, and, and, and switching things up quickly. You know, we need to switch things up. Bodega in the house. I assumed that the way we used Hunt during summer league was a glimpse of how Reddish could be used in off on the offensive end. Yeah. Yeah, very, very similar players in terms of how they move. Damn, yep. And uh, let's see what Farron Hunt can do in the in Westchester as well. Yep, with that situation. But but yeah, you're looking you're looking at the right things in terms of the glimpse of how it was used, uh, you know, and how how Cam fits into this puzzle. Right? CAA salute salute to the chat. <laughs> Shock the world means 500 with that. CAA ain't as high on, on the win total with this thing. But, yeah, for me, it's about development from within with this situation. Yep. Yep. Appreciate you, D. Let's get it. Have a great show. It's going to be a great year ahead, chopping up New York Knicks ball. Wasn't Fournier the sixth man in Boston? That's an interesting point, man, child. I didn't follow Boston as much with that situation. He was tr he was brought in at the trade deadline. I know, I know that. Um, but yeah, wouldn't wouldn't be surprised. But truth is, he's two years older, and <clears throat> yeah, excuse me, yeah, two years older, and four in the A basically, you know, isn't. A starting shooting guard or shouldn't be a starting shooting guard you know on a winning team <coughs> yeah <clears throat> in terms of his ability to to stop athletic wings it's going to be restrictive definitely salute quite money in the house 
Let's get it. Yep. <clears throat> the motivational tap in. Appreciate you. He wasn't six man. He did start with that. Yep. Yeah, to me, he's getting older in the league. Um, I just think to be an elite team, you know, <clears throat> I can't see Evan Fournier starting on on great teams or good teams around the league on on winning teams. With that, that's no knock on him. He, he can certainly uh, contribute. He can shoot. He can score as well. Um, I'm looking for a two way player for this thing. Um, I can be patient with Grimes as well. He doesn't need to start immediately. But I do feel and I, I anticipate Grimes, you know, getting better and growing into taking that spot as well. Yep. Or Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish next to uh next to uh, RJ. Well for that thing, right? This is the NBA. You need size, you need athleticism, you know, and all of that. You know, in, in, in order to be able to slow other teams down. With that. Yeah, CAA ready for Fournier starting and Randall to bring the ball up. <laughs> ready to see it. Yep. With that situation. I don't think Tibbs will be lasting, you know, too much longer with that situation. But I, I did want to hit on another new addition to this team as well, which is Isaiah Hartenstein. This thing he spoke which was nice as well. Um, and basically, yeah, Isaiah says, you know, you see his quote there as well. Um, he, he says he doesn't think that there's a lot of players in the league that consistently play with more passion and energy. With that. That's what we need to push Mitch and to push this team. We need that another energy guy. OB quickly, they bring the energy, right? I think fans are going to love this guy me personally right a dirty work guy guy that's going to come in lay it all out there right <clears throat> a, a more talented taj gibson basically a bigger taller um you know a more talented taj gibson you know at a younger age with this thing right and bringing that energy what are your personally thoughts about hartenstein his abilities you know, that he brings in, ladies and gents, with this thing. Absolute weapon. Yep. With that. Dirty says, I wouldn't be shocked if one of Grimes or IQ doesn't outperform for an EA. Right. <clears throat> Interesting. Reddish will come off the bench. Behind RJ, Grimes' competition is quickly, not Cam. I can't see Tibbs playing three guards off, off the bench and not play Cam's, that thing. If Tibbs really does have full reign, it's going to be very interesting to see because reports were he wasn't you know, big on the Cam signing as well. But hopefully Cam shows him up, you know, puts in that work. And shows because he, he he definitely you know can can do some things for us with that situation yeah and a heart yeah absolutely a p nice as well the energy that he's going to bring the passion as well he feels like there are very few players in the league yeah, see, this this is a guy who knows his game basically he knows his strengths and that's why he he's here you know he knows he could he could do a role for us, and, uh, and that's why the Knicks brought him in. Eight million dollars. Well, going to be a nice backup to Mitch. Well, bring something different as well. I'm loving it with what he's going to bring. Jerry hits on the second unit. D Rose quickly, Obi, Hart, and either Cam or Grimes will be huge. Can't wait. Yep. Absolutely, you hit with that. And like I've been saying, I think our depth and our bench is gonna is gonna get the Knicks an added difference, an advantage over teams. You know, a lot of the games we'll win will be off the depth and the bench. Well, putting in that work. Well, Bodega Wi-Fi, smash that like button. Appreciate you, fam, for that and the support. 
as well. Let's get it. Yep. Appreciate you for, uh, for that E. Yep, taking care of that uh, bot. That situation. Jay Singh in the house. Salute, salute. Let's get it. This thing, give us your win total. With this thing, like I said, 45 wins. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the players to let their talk on the court do the talking with this thing their play sorry their play on the court to do the talking for them and it starts next week right players can only say so much in these interviews tom thibodeau right let let this team see what it looks like whoever tib starts it's going to be hot topic but it's going to be ultimately judged by the play on the court with this situation right training camp in full swing now players putting in that work and uh, we've seen, we've heard the quotes from Content Media Day with this thing. The New York Knicks season's almost about to get underway. Fan base ready to rock out on the streets are buzzing with this situation. I know everyone's hype and amped. They've got their certain thing that they're looking for this season. Now, for me, it ain't about wins and losses. It's about how we look this season, right? What, what players pop. Development as well pulling off a nice trade if it's there as well a big draft at the end of the tunnel as well we need to be have all eyes on all possibilities with this thing right pudge nice going to be at the game well which one pudge the uh first one the preseason opener against detroit is it fam let us know mitch been working on the shot let's hope um, I don't know how much he's going to get an opportunity to get it off, but but yeah, he needs to uh to feed, be featured more on offense. I think in the pick and roll, especially, right? Like E spells out, right? Get forty eight percent from the line. I'm hoping seventy percent. I'm hoping he can make a huge jump because let's be real, he's going to get fouled a lot. Mitch does get fouled a ton. With that thing and it's going to be critical for him to hit that shot man hit that j and it's going to help us out a ton man pudge nice in the house against pistons that's what's up fam it's going to be awesome to see the heroes in action and uh, the new york knicks fan base is going to rep rep the city strong on that one man and it's going to be nice to see ivy cade as well and uh, of course, Jalen Duran with that thing, right? Yep, let's go. Mets, Knicks, fans, let's go. Yep, let's get it. Sam, appreciate you as well. Bodega up in the house. Yep. Yeah, facts, right? Not a bad seat in the house with that thing, man. No, the streets are buzzing and msg's buzzing with that right doesn't doesn't matter if you're outside of the arena you can feel it right shock the world 99 nicks eight seed knocked off the top seed heat loop that's what's up let's get it that yep loving the buzz and the optimism and the feelings of the fan base right this is our team right we we rep no matter what but yeah we all want to see certain things this season for me uh this young core is critical to getting this team where we need it to be right giving them opportunities them taking advantage of these opportunities right and and, and getting there with that situation right so yeah uh, we, we also do see uh, alan hun talk about his his thoughts last night as well on twitter now um <clears throat> Alan Hahn says, I get his reasoning, and Fournier is the best spacer on the team and another playmaker. But after 20 games, let's see what the defensive metrics tells us about this. Grimes might be better fit at some point. Well, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I feel these thoughts on that situation. What do you guys think about that, right? If Fournier starts, then okay, that's the decision he makes. But let's see how it looks defensively and uh, and when Tibbs 
you know, is willing to switch things up is going to be absolutely key to you know his success this season right with this roster and, and this fit it's uh it's going to be critical right this 19 men roster it's deep there's a rotation to figure out well but the trade deadline for me is going to be a huge part of this season it's going to be absolutely popping with this and, and that's why i've got 45 wins i think we make some changes i think we finish the season stronger than what we start as well and we we, we finish strong up in here and we definitely make the play in playoffs 45 wins eight seed as well and then yeah time will tell with this situation right Tay hits on Fournier will start, but we all know who's going to finish it out, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely with that situation, right? Fournier did ride the pine a lot with that. Yeah. And JB and D Rose closing it out, like P and I says, that situation. Right? Tibbs will love that closing unit of JB and D Rose. So I was thinking my, myself the other day as well. Yep. With that situation. Um, I think quickly is, is going to get a chance to close some games out as well with his hot shooting, you know, and his fearlessness, you know, pulling up from the logo, uh, getting us back into games, you know, off the bench. He's going to be able to stay on the floor and, and close out the game. I think when he's hot as well, and, uh, and quickly is an improved defender as well. Let's not forget about that. Jerry says, I see where Mark Berman has left or will be leaving the post. I do think he will just make stuff up, but he may have had to, as the Knicks coach in front office, yep, don't give out any info. Right, good man. Yep. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, looking forward to it. Pudge Nice is going to be in the building. Salute to you against Detroit. Let us know anyone else rocking out in the comments section as well that's got their tickets to any games so far this season as well i'm hoping to get to some games early next year you know as the, in the turn of the new year as well it's going to be fun and we're going to be rocking out then best believe it with that situation but yeah i'm good with the roster and the additions at the moment let's see how what tibbs does at, at, you know and these players how they gel together as well but i'm not looking at the wins total it's about progression for this situation right my most improved player is IQ and Obi for this season. My X factor is RJ. My surprise player is Hartenstein. And my team MVP is Brunson up in here as well. Uh, and Grimes going to have an increased role. Obi, Grimes, and IQ with increased roles this season. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun as well. We'll be on a Friday night again ready to chop this thing up as well yeah yes sir <laughs> pudge nice yeah as well um definitely you know mark will be still talking about the knicks he'll be around you know 23 seasons of covering the team he's, he's not just going to disappear um with that situation he'll be all over twitter as well best believe it and uh, and maybe even on the show as well stranger things would have happened with that situation Yep, absolutely right. Yep, you already know. Yep, with this thing. He says there, with the minutes, I could see IQ being the most improved player on the team. Yep, definitely, yep. Yep, absolutely right. He says, uh, also, have to respect, or Dirty says, have to respect Berman doing all these shows when he knew he, he was retiring as well yep not sure if he knew then um dirty as well um, i think berman had recent recently made the decision um you know towards towards camp as well with this situation but yeah you might be right with that jerry says fournier will start we we know who will close out yet yeah, quickly iq led the knicks in fourth quarter minutes yep yeah. That was spelled out by Alan Hahn as well last night. Well, not Burks. Yeah. We know Tibbs, he, he goes, he sticks with dudes that he trusts, right? With that situation all day, every day. D Rose Brunson 
like Pudge and I spelled out as well. What's going to be interesting is who he goes with the big men. You know, does Obi close out at the five? Does Mitch stay on the floor? You know, if he's hitting free throws, does Hartenstein get get minutes closing games out as well? I think he's going to get an opportunity as well with this thing. But um, yeah, it's been fun chopping this thing up. You already know what it is. Smash that like, subscribe if you haven't already. It's going to be fun season ahead. Many more shows, guests, surprises, giveaways. You already know what it is. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one as we wrap this baby up. Appreciate everyone's comments, support, buzz. Keep it up. Keep the energies up as well. Have a great day, week, the head. Well, you already know what it is. Many blessings. And I uh, appreciate everyone's passion out here as well. We're going to be having a lot of fun this season, right? Best believe it. That's my prediction, right? It's going to be fun, non-stop action out here with this team that we love. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll get it on the next one. Like I said, peace. Can't be serious. I mean, really though? You mean to tell me that them photons went out like that? Hey, yo, Nims, let me hold this for a minute. Bum bing, close the train doors. The boo swept, can't believe they got old Ford. Kyrie, you'll probably try. Well, whole set, shit, let me move my bowels. Bum bing, this must be a dream. I thought I saw Spike with the other team. Bum bing, what we talking about? No matter who's on your team, you in the next house. That playing game don't mean you want inside the play. To the media, take that jersey off The four games I'm tuned in, you had the city watching Don't even watch Philly play, just watch James Harden That sweet pick, never mind, I let my man take him And now KD having nightmares of Jason Tatum That famous line by Low Deluxe that you gon' get this work Don't talk to me about Ben, he said his back hurt Now Kyrie likes the Nash, you can take the blame Come next year, I'm going back to playing half them games The truth be told, we don't care about your Barclays When it comes to the city, this year's RJ's my young gems right now, yeah, they on some shit From Obi Top and I man your ass real quick A line flip, no, I feel bad for Blake Griff That's the loss you gotta take to win a championship Now you back like the New Jersey Nets What you thought your final four was cutting down the nets Bong thing, close the train doors The boom swept, can't believe they got 04 Kyrie, you a problem child Well, whole set, shit, let me move my bowels Bong thing. This must be a dream. I thought I saw Spike with the other team. Bong bing. What we talking about? No matter who's on your team, you in the Knicks house. When it comes to the city, it's